Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Dr. Amna Hussain, board certified pediatrician, board certified lactation consultant, and mom. A few weeks ago, we talked a lot about sunscreen, sunscreen for babies, sunscreen for kids, and ways that we can actually prevent sunburns and practice good sun safety. You guys said it was really helpful, but you had a lot of questions about insect repellent sprays. Of course, summer's upon us. It's been a very difficult year. We've all been cooped up inside. We want to get outdoors, but there's a ton of mosquitoes, bugs, ticks, you name it. So this episode, we're going to actually talk about good practices and safety when it comes to insect repellents on our kids. So just like with sun safety, when it comes to repelling insects, I always think first line of defense is also going to be your clothing. So actually thinking about clothing that's long sleeve or has cuffs and collars is very important. For example, if you're in the woods where there's an overabundance of ticks, a long sleeve shirt with a snug collar is your best bet. In general too, you want to think about your pant legs and cuffs as well. So even pulling the socks over your pant cuffs, even though I know it looks kind of dorky, is the safest bet. And in this case, flip-flops are probably not your best bet. Instead, you want to think of something like hiking shoes or boots to make sure you're really protecting not only your feet, but also your ankles. Now, obviously, that's in regards to something like dense forestry, right? But if you're going fishing, the same principles apply. Things like insects, chiggers, those are all very prevalent in still stagnant waters. So especially after a cold winter season, you're going to find that those insects are going to be very abundant. Make sure that you're preparing yourself and your children properly, wearing those long sleeve clothing, making sure you're wearing appropriate boots to prevent any kind of bites at the legs. And when it comes to children, we do recognize that insect repellents are not safe for a certain age, especially babies two months and under. So I actually recommend instead, if you're going for a walk or something, to make sure you actually have some kind of mosquito netting that you can buy at any hardware store over the stroller. Then in general, again, sticking to longer sleeve, lightweight cotton clothing. Another tip you're gonna wanna be aware of is try to stay away from scents. So scented soaps, scented sprays, or hairspray, especially when it comes to your children because those can be a little bit more attractive to insects. All right, now let's get into the nitty gritty and talk about DEET. What it is, what it stands for. DEET is a common active ingredient that's found in insect repellents. It's named after a type of oil diethyl toluamide. And the important thing to remember is it's an insect repellent. So it repels biting insects like mosquitoes and ticks, but not stinging insects like hornets, wasps, bees, which is a very important distinction. Now it's super effective as long as you follow the product instructions very carefully. A lot of people talk about the concentration of DEET and that's really important. So for example, the DEET that I have in my home is 25%. Typically, when it comes to the concentration of DEET in a product, that indicates how long that product will last. So for example, 10% DEET will last about two hours. 20% DEET will last about four hours. 30% DEET, about five hours. And in general, the American Academy of Pediatrics or the AAP recommends you not use anything more than 30% DEET on children. Again, remember, insect repellent is only safe on children two months of age and older, but there are a lot of practices that you have to keep in mind when it comes to using good, safe techniques when applying these insect repellents on our kids. So one thing I recommend is using the lowest DEET concentration proportional to how long you'll be outside. So if you're going to only be outside for one hour or less, you likely don't need to be using 30% DEET. So try to use the concentration proportional to the amount of time you'll be outside. So the other thing to remember is where to apply it. Insect repellent should only be applied to exposed areas of skin, not underneath clothing. And when it comes to applying it to the face, in general, I actually recommend parents mist their hands and then pat that on the child's face. Make sure to avoid the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. In general, you'll also want to make sure where you're applying the insect repellent in terms of indoors versus outdoors. 
Typically, I recommend it be applied outdoors where there's good ventilation and you'll also wanna make sure that it's away from food. You'll also wanna avoid using repellents on scrapes, cuts, open wounds, because it could increase the possibility of toxicity as well, and also stings a lot. And when it comes to how much do you use, well, sunscreen, you've heard me say a few times, has to be reapplied every two hours. Those rules are not similar for insect repellent. Typically, insect repellent is a one and done thing. Unless, of course, you're gonna be outside for full 10 hours, then yes, you should be using probably 30% D and applying it twice. When I talk about sunscreen and spray sunscreens, we talk about at least three to four good mists and close so that you get a good concentration. That is not the same when it comes to insect repellents. You're actually gonna to wanna to spray it further away and have just a one pass misting run through. You're not gonna to wanna to kind of spray very close to the skin. That actually increases the amount of the concentrated D. So I get a lot of questions about natural insect repellents. Personally, I don't use these very frequently in my home just because I don't find great success with them. Not to mention they only repel insects for a very short amount of time and they don't have approval by the Environmental Protection Agency or the EPA. Some of these include citronella oil, cedar oil, peppermint oil, geranium oil. So typically I don't find success with these and instead I find that the scents can actually sometimes even attract other stinging insects and also might increase the likelihood of a potential allergic dermatitis or rash because of all the botanical scents and extracts that might be included in these oils. Speaking of, what do we do if our child has a reaction to the insect repellent? This is important to remember. So if you suspect an allergic reaction or a rash appears after using insect repellent, stop using the product, wash your child's skin with soap and water, and make sure you contact poison control. The number for poison control is 1-800-222-1222. You can also absolutely contact your child's pediatrician. If you do go in for an appointment, I really highly recommend you bring your insect repellent with you so that they can also take a look at what the concentration of DEET is and what other ingredients are in there as well. So let's talk about safety when it comes to these repellents and when you come indoors, what to do. So typically, I recommend washing hands right away. You'll also probably want to time a shower very close to when coming indoors and your child's wearing insect repellent. For us, we typically only go outside in the evenings when the sun is not in the peak hours, but bugs are definitely swarming. So if I do apply insect repellent, I usually apply the 20% that I have in my house. And again, I only apply it to the exposed areas of skin, not going underneath the clothing. And then when we come indoors, I actually take off those clothes, wash hands, and then immediately put my little bra in the shower or the tub. Another really important tip is when you come indoors and shed that clothing, make sure you do a tick check. So we were outdoors on our patio, not near really dense forestry, actually playing in a, with our water table, so playing around water. And I brought my daughter in, took off her Crocs, was taking off her swimsuit and spotted a tick. And it was actually really close to her diaper fold. So it was almost something that I missed. And that's something to remember. When you do a tick check, don't just check for large exposed areas on the arms, but actually check in some of the hidden areas. Lift up the hair, check around the hairline at the nape of the neck, check underneath the arm folds, check in the diaper fold areas. Make sure you check in the ankles, all those areas that you might actually happen to skip over. So it's very important, even if you do use insect repellent, to know that sometimes ticks can still latch on. Sometimes insects can still bite. So just make sure that you are doing a good thorough tick check. When it comes to pulling off the tick, technique also matters. Don't use your fingers, don't grab a napkin. Instead, what we recommend is actually using a pair of tweezers and grabbing the tick at the head and then pinching straight off. Now, of course, use the resources you have near you. If you're outside in the woods, you probably don't have a pair of tweezers. So just work with what you have, but do try to keep that in mind when it comes to technique and pulling the tick off. So definitely when I saw that tick, I was a little alarmed and I went out and bought a higher concentration of DEET. So this is 98% DEET. And as you can see, it protects for up to 10 hours. I have never used this since I bought it. I think I had like this crazy like mom 
pediatrician freak out moment where I realized, oh my gosh, a tick, how long was it on? Oh my God, what if it transmitted something, even though I know it was on for less than maybe one to two hours and I was able to pull it off safely and I kept an eye on the site. Nonetheless, I bought this. I want you to know I have never used this. It's a very high concentration of DEET and never are we outdoors for so long that it's 10 hours and I need to think about it. But it does happen, you know, that we do see these kind of bug bites or tick bites on our kids and freak out. So I want you to know I'm not immune to that either. I hope this video was helpful. I did try to tie in not only just good practical tips for young kids, but also when it comes to older children and when you are applying the insect repellent safely. If this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can absolutely ask them below in the comments. Make sure to share it with any other families as we move into the summer and we're getting our kids outdoors more. Have a good day. See you next week.